We make a great TV clamp. You got the energy out of all we have a hallway. You're like, a bunch of bumblebees. I love this. I even filmed you coming in. It's so awesome, the energy in the room. So we got the big I saw the research. Well, um, okay, first thing I want to do is welcome a few people. Phil, welcome Phil, everybody. Hi, Phil. Left, uh, uh, was it Intero? Intero. Intero. It sells 20, 30 homes a year. He's got six listings right now. He's oh, porting sweet. them all over to EXP. Welcome, man. He's awesome. 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 <laughs> and then Kim here did a couple of deals this past year with Krista. I fell in love with her. Is anybody surprised? Yeah. <laughs> we all fell in love with Krista. It's a, it's she's got that it's power. And uh, Kim, at what company? Did you Realty just joined yeah, Realty just One Group. Yeah. Give Kim, welcome. Yeah. And then Paul is here checking us out. Do not mess it up. There's Paul. <laughs> I've known Paul. Paul, how long have we known each other? Twelve years. Twelve, Twelve years. years. And we go way back. So he's here checking us out. So don't mess it up. Be nice to him. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. And then let's see in the back over here we have Ruth. The famous Hi. Ruth, and uh, Ruth is, is, she too is checking us out, so don't make it on the list. Uh, Ruth has been friends with my family for, how long, Ruth? Before, t like, 2009, or yeah. around there. Yeah. About 10 years. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. awesome. So she's thinking about getting a real estate license and heading into real estate. Is that a fair yeah, assessment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, and we're going to welcome her here with the open arms. And then we have the mother-daughter te team, and Megan. Who can say no to that smile? I <laughs> whatever she's selling. It's not fair. And then, and then we have uh, Gary. Gary O, oh, give Gary a hand, everybody. <laughs> Gary just joined us from what company? So right. I honestly couldn't remember. <laughs> I wasn't trying to do anything weird. Um, he's literally going, okay, who signs the MLS transfer sheet? That was what he was saying to That's how, that's how new he is. Are you official yet, or are you right I'm there? Official, yeah. All right, welcome. Just... Give him a hand. This is... So what day are you official for you? I don't know. I've signed so much paper. <laughs> <laughs> you, you guys probably started the same day here. Yes, yes, yes. We got two chairs right up here, guys. Two chairs, Friday. Give Gary a hand. Welcome, Gary. And then finally, last but not least, we have John, who grew up. Uh, how long have you been in that house? My, my parents' house in Carmichael, they've been going on 60 years. And then your new one off of Winding Way? My uh, new house in Fair Oaks, I've been in there for um, five years now. Five years. So he, he's, he lives like walking distance to where I grew up as a kid. Aww. And my dad would go walking on the river all the time. He's an avid runner. He's got the body of a god. <laughs> and um, they got to know each other because my dad was walking and my dad's friendly. I don't know how, but, but uh, and they, they hit it off, and, and so John, too, has been a broker for 15 years, yes, sir. and he's here checking us out, like Paul, who, and so don't mess it up, okay? We gotta, <laughs> don't all mess right. it up. Okay, I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> right on, right on. Okay, so welcome, everybody. I just want to give you a little welcome. Okay, next thing is, tonight, maybe... We're gonna have Western nights. Yeah. Maybe is there power outage in Newcastle? Oh, there's no power, there's no power. There's no power. It's on. It's a go. It's a go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Give, give Dan a hand. Thank you, Dan. That's if the power stays on, right? It generates generators. Oh, it's got generators. Yeah. Okay. They have so generators. If you have not heard, PCAR, Placer County Association Realtors, have their annual Western night. It's like a casino night. There's blackjack and poker and and all kinds of fun stuff. And you don't have to do that if you don't want to. But this beverages and, and there's food and there's raffle and money they're raising it's gonna be a great time it's 5 30 to 9 30 and my wife is coming to this and she doesn't normally come to stuff so kathy's gonna be there i'm excited i'm gonna be there are you guys going i'm going I want yep, to go. yep, yep. so here's the deal you can buy a ticket i think at the door dan is it possible you can buy it right now for 35 or 45 at the door 35 right now, 45 at the door. On Eventbrite. And I happen to have one free ticket left. By the way, EXP is the event sponsor. It cost me a fortune, but we will be highlighted all over the place. There will be a huge turnout, hundreds of agents. It's going to be a great time, and EXP is the event sponsor. We like to be involved with our local association of realtors. So it's not REMAX. It isn't Cobalt Banker. It is EXP. We'll be plastered all over that thing. 
So come tonight. So who would who would like to to possibly go tonight? If you're thinking about going tonight, raise your hand. I'll go with you, Richard. Okay. So I have three here. Okay. So I'm going to give you the ticket because you're our guest. So Kim gets the guest. So give Kim a hand. So Alicia is our all-star lender. Does two hundred loans a year or something? Two hundred loans. So she can buy her own thirty-five dollar ticket. For me. <laughs> Darcy lives on a million-dollar horse ranch. She can buy her own thirty-five ticket. You get a free one. So Rob, would you give a free ticket to Sandy? Our last free ticket. Okay, good, good, good. It's gonna be a good time. Okay, moving along, and that is five thirty to nine thirty. Um, it is an adult type venue tonight, just FYI. If you do bring kids, they're gonna be 21 and over because they will be serving adult beverages. So if that's not your thing, get a Coke, get a coffee, it's no big deal. You can't just drop our kids off? <laughs> no, no, this is not date night. Your kids go to peak our Western night. That's kind of funny. That is actually funny. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna start a little bit with legal and tax advice. So as we are uh, guiding our clients in a real estate transaction, um, how much you know legal advice do we give them? How much ta tax advice do we give them? And they expect you to know something, and they want you to is it competent, intelligent? So where is it crossing the line? And does anybody know the answer to that? Zero. 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 You guys are a sharp group. <laughs> this second, here's how it goes down. And if you ever just find it irresistible, make sure it's verbal. <laughs> Not a text or an email. If you're going to step in it, just tell them. Don't go, here's the text. I did everything I did based upon this text from Krista or this email from Alicia or Megan Gonzalez. And there it is, and you stepped in it. On 18B, I believe it is, of the purchase contract, it says, uh, for the California Association of Realtors, it's not EHP agents, you guys are incompetent, you can't give basic legal and tax advice. We are forbidden mm -hmm. to give legal and tax advice. Because the laws change all the time, right? We have this yeah. thing called the California you know, politics, and we got the capital, and they make laws. They change tax laws, they change the legal laws, estate planning, the way you hold title. It's just say, I would love to give you the answer to that, but I am absolutely forbid. We are not trained as lawyers and in the law. We don't take update classes. We're not trained as the CPAs, right? We're not trained in tax law, which is this big and changes all the time. So I am so sorry. I know this is going to feel like the, um, the cheap way out or whatever, but we, we, you have to consult with your CPA. They don't have what we can give them Lockwood, Lockwood and Associates, write that down. They are real estate CPAs, they're not just a CPA. We're not talking H&R Block, we're talking Lockwood. And they'll charge them, they're gonna probably charge you a hundred bucks to talk to them and to get an answer. But at least it's all right, this is too important. You're buying something for $400,000. Let me ask you guys, how often do you buy stuff for $400,000 on average or 300, or even a crummy little condo for $225,000? You need to get the right advice. So as a professional, I'm not going to tell you something that, that something may have changed. And so I'm going to refer you to Lockwood & Associates here in Roseville. And um, Dave Lockwood is a real estate uh, CPA, and he does it for companies that runs in the billions of dollars. And for local, he does, he does mine. Uh, your part, so he does my, my partners for a decade. I've used him. He's great. So uh, then for uh, law, you can refer them to Mike Beattie. B E E D E at Fair Oaks. And it's now, I forget the name of his law firm. I think it's BD and Associates, isn't it? BD, it's got a weird name. Barry, do you remember that? I think it is BD and Associates. No, it's not. Is they changed the name. I got it right here. Let's get it right. And we'll put this By the way, Lockwood is also, um, Lockwood's also Wayne Hall's um, CPA. Yep. Um, and several of the other, I, know, I remember when I was there, a lot of the top people over there all use him as well. I mean, he knows, he knows real estate. I've been using him for years. As okay, well. it's called. I'm not a top person. It, it, I messed it up. He's Steve, I've never needed I'm a lawyer. Steve. This guy is Steve Beatty. I messed yes. it up. I just said that. The, the, it's called, he, he, for, he partnered up with two other lawyers. So they have a law firm. And it's called BPE. Yeah, that's B right. for BD, P for his other guy's last name, and E for the other guy's last name, whoever they are. It's called BPE Law Group. We'll put this in the team Facebook page. Now he's good for he's good for litigation items. For evictions, though, I would use uh, Thomas Hogan. Yeah. yeah. 
So we'll post that in the team page as well. Thomas Hogan is the number one eviction specialist for Sacramento. Do not coach your clients on how to evict a tenant. He'll do it for like how much? It's only like seven hundred and fifty dollars. He'll all the get way them through. out and quit. Um, well, Darcy. Steve, sixteen. You can call and they will just do it over the phone. It'll be like one hundred fifty bucks, and they'll tell you what to write. It's really simple. They're really really helpful. And they'll say, "What are you pertaining to?" Okay, this is our best lawyer for that. Wow. And they'll tell you how much. So it's That's not awesome. like this yeah. whole like go down there kind of crap. Yeah, it's it's awesome. So we'll post names and numbers in the Facebook. The Brinko Team Facebook page and get you in there. Um, so we'll do that. Sound good? Mm -hmm. So that's how you handle legal attacks. We had a uh, one of our agents in the Bay Area. He he is number seven in production uh, for 450 Better Homes agents. He's moved to EXP. Um, he's been here a year. He's got 60 people in his rev share team, and he's delighted. He's still selling 40, 50 homes a year at over a million a house and doing great. Well, one of the guys he just sold a house to he moves in and the family room ceiling collapsed oh, into the family room, which yikes. is, how does that happen? Turned out there was a pipe leak, just rotten lousy time. You get buy a car and the tranny goes, right? And so, but the buyer's upset. He's saying the seller had hidden disclosures. <laughs> Silly stuff, right? There's a problem. You know what the problem is? His buyer is a lawyer. Uh oh. Yes. So I have a rule. I discriminate against lawyers. <laughs> I, 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 this scares, it scares me to death. You meet them. They're the nicest people, but they get upset. They're just like, they're ready to fight. They have that, that aggressive nature in them. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, um, I personally won't represent a lawyer in a real estate transaction. You don't have to, to you know, I don't know if it, is it legal to say I discriminate against lawyers? Yep. I love all yeah. people, but I don't work with, I don't do lawyers. They are not a protected class. Yep, and so here's the deal. Um, a, don't, don't discriminate against, we love all people, but do discriminate against lawyers, okay? That's just like a good thing. Because here's the deal, here's the deal. They can sue you for fun. You've heard the story in Washington, D.C., a lawyer got mad at his dry cleaner, just kept suing her and suing her and suing her until she went bankrupt. She kept defending herself. And he just, yeah, oh yeah. Then, and then well, she can counter sue for, for fees, yeah? And then she's gotta collect, and, and that's even more money. He, he says, I will bankrupt you, documented and did it. And so there's no charge. They can just represent themselves yeah. and keep filing motions and you gotta, get, you gotta pay yeah. someone big money. So honestly, I- I have a seller right now who's an attorney and I took it because his wife's my kid's fourth grade teacher. And he literally said on the phone the other day, well, I could just keep them in litigation for two years for free. Yeah. They're cocky and they know what they can do, and, and, or they can barter. They can, they can go to a friend who's a real estate lawyer and go, hey, cover me on this, I'll help you on your accident stuff, yeah. and have no, they barter, and then you're bleeding and they just keep pressuring you to go, settle, settle, and you give them $40,000, $80,000. I'm not even kidding on the don't do real estate lawyer thing. My guy is scared to death. He is like horrified because in the Bay Area they're super liti litigious. They're 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 crazy, man. Another friend of mine is a Cobalt Banker agent there, um, a good friend, and he, the buyer bought a house and the second bathroom wasn't permitted and they even disclosed it. But the buyer didn't like the way they disclosed it. He's like, if you don't get this permitted, I have to close the best room. I'm gonna Whoa. sue all of you what? and I'm gonna. Oh yeah. I didn't like the way it was disclosed. So he goes, I don't want to deal with this. So he pays $70,000 to fix the bathroom and get it permitted. Oh. And now he's saying, aha, you knew you were wrong. Oh. Oh. This is, this is culp you're admitting culpability here. And he's going after him. He's like, okay. this is a, another lawyer. And so it's like, you start giving legal advice, you're now after, because this guy, our EXP agent, separate issue, the Cobalt Baker guy's in a big tough battle. You give advice after, you're, we, our relationship starts at the, from escrow to close. After close, the, the relationship is severed. We no longer represent them, and we are allowed to take their, I'm really mad at the seller, John, <laughs> and here's my grievance. And I want, this guy is making demand. We're allowed to go pass that over and go, hey, my sellers, you could do that, but you could give no legal or tax advice. 
You can, and you should, you should go, wow, I understand you're upset. I will do my best to get them to pay for that. I will, I, they need to know. When you go to Bank of America, Wells Fargo, look, sorry, sir, our policy here at Bank of America is no. Do we want to hear that if we're upset? We want to hear something like Cindy go, you know what? I will, I will fight for you. I will go to the mat for you. We'll do these things. Frank, Mary, we'll go to the you guys. All right. So um, anyway, so it's pretty cool. Is that, do we have clarity there? Yeah. I'm saving you a lot of pain. We all agree? Okay, next one, next one. 48 hours to perform. Who knows the answer to this? If you're in escrow and the buyer isn't performing and you need a seller, uh, you, need, you need the buyer to perform, what can the seller do? How long is that notice? 48 hours, 48 hours right? <laughs> right? right? And, and, and it's forget, I mean, honestly, I almost forget how long. So you have to do it too often. But um, uh, you could give a notice to perform. Take the emotion out of it. It's just business. You know, I tell people managing expectations of the other agent. I, Debbie, I would tell her when she was back when I was selling real estate. Remember that a long time ago? And um, I would say when we enter escrow, I want you to call Kim, the other agent, and say it's nothing personal. But on day 15, we're going to issue a notice to perform. We do this with all of our deals. I want you to know up front, don't be insulted. Because I know when Cindy finally got her first one, she's like, well, it was insulting. It's like, oh my God, they gave me a notice to perform. You know what I mean? And so we want to let them know it's, it's nothing personal. This is how we do our business. You're going to get this unless you remove contingencies. Uh, day, whatever it was, day 12, if we had negotiated 12, or how many times have I told you that? Oh, a zillion. Elizabeth yeah. Baxter said the same exact thing on the panel. She says she sets that expectation up front and issues that other agents may have with agents she doesn't have because she sets that expectation yep. up front. And then, and it's the big stick, I would often, I couldn't get my client to perform. I want to close, if you're in escrow with the buyer, do you just want to close and get paid? Yeah, definitely. So I would often tell them, because yeah. they call me, you need to do this, bring all the seat, you need to do this, and they would get mad at me. I'm like, look, I want the buyer John to do this too, but he's dragging his feet, I don't know why. I mean, I went over the school reports, one of the disclosures says, yeah, but he won't sign. I, they, then they go, look, let me help you out, Jen. Send me a notice to perform. It's the big stick. And then I go to John. John, we got to poop we got off the fence, you know, up the pot or whatever the saying is. You you have to, right? Oh, you know what I mean? So the point is, it was a picket fence. No, no. So the point is this. It would give me, I go, we're going to lose this house or we're going to get it. But you have to decide. And that they would also go, okay, fine, where do I sign? Then it was all the stress, because I'm stressed until he removes all contingencies, right? Yeah. You don't want to drag on. And if it goes past 21 days or 14, it, then they don't understand. They want to, I want to sue everybody. Well, the truth is, unless they remove contingencies, they're still intact. But it doesn't matter. They can still sue you. Well, I don't care. You said you'd do it in this time frame. You know, if you're in a lawsuit, you lose. End of story. Okay. Now you have like our guy Jeff in the Bay Area who's with EXP and gonna do 50 homes at 1.2. He's so worried. He's like, so let's say, what happens if this thing goes down? I go, it's like getting in an auto accident. If you get in an auto accident on Highway 80 or 65 here, what's gonna happen? Your insurance is gonna kick in. We have E&O insurance. There's a deductible. I believe it's 2,500 bucks, something like that. So you're protected. You're not gonna be financially devastated. Now if you've committed fraud, E&O's out the window. How do you commit fraud? Your client says, just initial for me. Initial for me that the pipes were leaky. I'm on a trip to Montana and you just, I don't have time for this. Please, please, I need this to close. They're holding up the close. So you do quick initials and then that's the pipe that leaks and the, and the thing comes down. You see how you committed fraud? And we had, and I'll tell the story like in three seconds. One of our agents 10 years ago, her neighbor who she adores, they barbecue with, they're, they're close with said, I'm in Idaho, I can't even get the DocuSign, please, for heaven's sakes, just sign the counter offer for me. Oh. She did. Do you know that signing somebody's name, you guys all know that's like fraud. Yeah. It's like, well, no, it's not, he told me to. You know what he said? I did not tell it to. That's what he said. Wow. And then the Department of Real Estate's like, did, did, did he? Yeah, and he said, no, I didn't. 
and that is not okay and she got me into this contract and I lost my money and I want her license I want her money and I believe our agent she's the sweetest most awesome person in the world if she says he told her to do it and I'm like don't ever so I use that story don't ever sign initials don't ever sign somebody's name don't ever do that because it, it there's no good well they told me to and when they're going no I didn't who looks guilty you are guilty, actually. You and will she lose. lost her license, right? Here's the weird thing. She moved out of California, left town, put her license on ice, and the Department of Real Estate just dropped it or something. So they, um, it, she literally relocated. <laughs> that was all is, is it okay for an agent to get a power of attorney for their client? And in that case, sign documents for them? That's all I that. highly recommend just never signing documents for the client. I think you're treading on such thin water even with the power of attorney, and most power of attorneys are invalid. I have every power of attorney we ever bring to a title company, they throw them out. This wasn't done right, that wasn't done right. So the, the power of attorney I downloaded from the internet, yeah, did you get your five bucks worth? Or your free form that this this is? So again, we're, we're, where'd you get the form? Is it valid? And so I just, again, people, you go, well, then we're not closing. You better get your butt to right. an internet cafe in Tibet. Right. I, I was in an internet cafe in, in the Himalayas. They have them, yeah. okay? I was eating yak burgers, okay? <laughs> you know what a yak burger is? It's not a bad burger that makes you yak. It's a, they call their cows, it's a form of a cow. It's called yeah. a yak. Yeah. And yak burgers are yaky. Okay. I'm like, oh yes, a burger, something besides rice and water and all. And I, just, I order a yak burger, I'm like, yak and yak, yeah. It was terrible. But um, anyways, okay, so uh, there's some form, managing the agent's expectations, let them know. We, this is how I do it, it's nothing personal. Man, if, if you need stuff done, get it done. Don't go, well, we need an extension. You bet if you need roof, get it, get it, and stay on them, because it drags on. When it drags on to 25 days, and finally the buyer cancels, and the seller looks at you and says, well, great, John. At least said we get their deposit right. Well, actually, no. What do you mean, no? Yeah, we, we put 17 days to remove all contingencies. It's 25 days in. Well, they never remove contingencies, right? So we don't. We, well, why didn't they? They go, well, they just didn't. And, and they're like, and why wasn't I informed about this? And I go, well, I kind of told you they hadn't signed. And then, and then they go, well, it can't work like that. I go, and then the truth is you're either gonna lie or tell the truth at that point, always tell the truth. Well, you could actually have issued a 40 hour notice to perform, but it was stressful and we just decided to be good. We thought they'd do it, they never did it. And so he goes, you mean to tell me that you made the decision for me and we didn't issue the notice form on day 17? Instead of me finding out 25 days in, I'm packed, I'm making commitments, I just signed a lease. Now I've got damage because you made the decision for me. Never make the decision for the client. Don't, it's not a we and them, it's, it's your seller and their buyer. It's your buyer and their seller. It's that so many times the listings and the buyer, it's us against them. You're not buying anything. Mm -hmm. I always say, wow, my client's really upset about this. My client's really concerned about that. It's not we are upset about this. We are concerned about this. Right. You're not buying anything. Take the we out of it, the us against them. I have to remind a listing agent, hey, you know, I'm with you. I want to get paid. I'm upset too, but this is your seller and my buyer. And you, can you make your seller do anything? Well, no, I can't. We could judge them. I go, I can't do it. My buyer, trust me, I want to get paid too. So come on, let's take a step back here. Take a breath, you know, and kind of coach them through that. So manage the agent expectations. The other thing <coughs> is managing client expectations. What, what are some ways that we manage client expectations? I've got three great ones, like, like home runs. But what are ways that you guys manage client expectations? I tell them what's happening next before it ever comes. Okay, so give me an example. I buy a house from you. I'm in escrow. We just got it. Woo, I'm so excited, Krista. What's next? What, so, and I'll say, what, what do we yeah, do next? So I have a standard email that I send before they can even ask me, congratulations, here's what's next. And it's the first week because they can't even process the whole thing. And so you they, kind of map it out. Yeah, map it out. And then I introduce them to my team. And then before the inspection, I send them a preparation for inspection. Prefer, like it's, I'm always preparing them. Before Good. whatever comes. Do they appreciate it? Oh yeah, I, I rarely have questions. Raise your hand if you have an email like this. Raise it high. Okay, half the room. So the other half of you, we are gonna post this email. Um, an example of Krista's, in, is yours like Krista's? You've got a video. I send a video the moment we go in. Can we post your video? Sure. 
Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna post Sydney's video in the Brent Gove team private Facebook page, and you guys can all join it if you want. We'll let you slide in. And then Chris is gonna post the, um, the email so you can see it, and just take it. All the great ideas I've ever gotten, I, I got from other people. I, I have learned so much from Cindy, from Darcy, from Krista, from all of you. I learned as much from you as you learned from me. Right? Just to clarify, and, he doesn't mean use Cindy's video. He means make a video <laughs> like Cindy. Yeah. Who's this woman? <laughs> she <laughs> <look> better than <laughs> Cindy. <laughs> They'll be like, who's Cindy? <laughs> and I like Cindy better than my video. So, I mean, that might work out. They're like, she, she looks like one of those superstar mega models. Yes. Uh, How long has she been working for you? <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll never forget the day you showed me all the magazines that you were on the front cover. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. Anyways. Um, okay. And Brent, yes. Once in a while, a phone call is really good. <laughs> you know, when you're verbally talking to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's the email, there's well, the video. Well, that's going to happen for sure. Naturally. But it, it saves the pressure of a long phone call. Because I've already told them stuff, so they don't have that many questions. So, you should, so sure. But, it's just but, a touch but there are agents that don't even hardly ever talk to their people. Oh. You know. I know. So I think here we know that the number one complaint the public has about real estate agents is the lack of communication. So our team's pretty good at communicating, and I would agree for sure. I think our team is exceptional at that. Lots of, hey, how you doing? Just checking in. Here's what's next. Always a quick text, a call, an email. If they're an email person, how do you communicate? Email. If they're a text person, how do you communicate? Instant message? You know, Facebook? Uh, email? The only way you get me is text. I delete all voicemails now. I'm just tired of it. I, my voicemail says, if you're a real estate agent or a loan officer, please do not leave a message. Hang up and text me. <laughs> and people leave messages all the time. I, I'm like, Rob Lewis, he leaves me two minute message. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I love you, Rob. I ain't listening to your message. And if you guys think I'm like, I don't listen to your message. I, I'm not like, I'm Howard Hughes, okay? I'm not like, I'm like, he's a weirdo. I've become a weirdo about voice I just can't do it anymore after, after four years. I don't do it. Yes. So one thing to also put in, like, the, for expectations, the difference of having, setting those expectations up front and not is the crazy phone calls. You don't get near as many crazy phone calls when you've already set up all those expectations throughout the escrow. Right, and then one thing that I want to touch base on about the notice to perform, if you're representing the buyer and you get one from a seller, and there's been times for me at least that I'm waiting on people to get the quotes. I'm not gonna release the inspection contingency so I can tell you, as a seller, and represent my buyer the best that I can, that we are ready to release those unless you we've agreed upon the notice, the repair request, right? So don't be afraid to, if you get those, don't be afraid to talk to the seller's agent and say, hey, this is what's going on, and tell your clients, we do have 48 hours to proceed and explain everything about it, right? Do you want to release them even though we don't know this? I don't recommend that. Because then you yeah. can put yourself in hot but water. But you need to tell them if they don't give us an answer, and you don't, you're gonna lose your earnest money or lose yeah. the house, you won't lose your earnest money. Only if you sign the release of move all contingencies, but you can lose the house. But they didn't answer my request for trace. They don't have to. Okay. They could go silence, and then the time goes by. They could take the home from you. No answer. No answer is a no, no answer. Yeah. No answer means no. Yeah. Well, no. They need to tell me no. They don't have to tell you squat, boo, or diddly. You need to perform within that forty hours, and you need to roll the dice and go look. If you sign this. You got to be good with this plumbing thing, because they, you know, well, they probably they got us over a barrel at this point. You know, they're they're just they're basically saying no by their lack of a response. You with me? They yeah. can't do that. They absolutely can do that. Okay, so all right, let's keep moving. So, how, what are other ways you manage the client's expectations? So I've got three great ones we haven't hit on yet. That was something I hadn't thought of. The sales process, right? You know what I like about what Cindy and Chris is doing. You can refer to it, please. I you did not tell me this. Go back and read the email. We even talk. Oh, oh you're right. My bad. That that is a CY move. Same thing with the video. If you have it all, I like I like the email. The video is very personal. I really love that. I would almost do two. Yeah. Right. But um, the, what's good about the email is copy and paste, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it copy and paste? Oh, yeah. 
Whereas the, if you miss say something on the video each time, even though it's more personal, but you, you, you're like, you're distracted, your kids nip you or something, and you say something weird, now they've got you, oh no, I didn't mean that, but you were distracted, you had a call, and all of a sudden you got a big problem. So I'm, I'm a huge fan of the copy and paste email. Well, you can use the same video over and over. Yeah, I think she used the same one. I used the same one, and I purposely didn't do it perfect because I believe it's more real if there's a few errors in there. So yeah. I purposely left it that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so it's on, not that on I get wrong YouTube. information, but like stuttering and like lacking, and like, yeah. but I just left it real like that. Yeah. So on your YouTube, you know, where you store your it perfect too. You, where you store your video on the YouTube, Brent. What? Where you store the video on the YouTube, you can just make it a private video and then only send it out to people as you want to. Yeah, here's you don't a video have to have I give it to you. Video. You can tell them the truth. Here's a video I give each of my sellers. Mm -hmm. Here's a video I give each of my buyers about the process. And then they'll, I would appreciate that. That's great. Okay, I can move on. So, other ways you manage your client's expectation. This is gold, the three I have. <laughs> I, know that, I know one of your three. Actually, Actually, that was probably more important than the three I have. What I mean is, I mean the additional three I have is just like money. That was probably more important because that, that really stops a lot of problems. We all agree? Of course, I didn't think about that. So. Okay, I'm going to go. Ready? So number one, Andrea Parker. Who knows? Raise your hand if you know the name Andrea Parker. Raise your hand. It's like five or six of you. She's the most successful buyer's agent I've ever hired oh. in 20 years. Oh, okay. Her first year, she sold 59 homes. Is that good? Oh, yeah. Here's what she would say. John, how long have you been looking for homes, John? Tell me, six months. Six months. And you were working with that Lions agent? Yeah. Yes. And, um, you mean to tell me, honey, no, she would call you honey. She's from Dallas. <laughs> honey, you mean to tell me you've been looking for homes? For Or she would say to him, no, sweetheart, you mean to tell me you're looking for, for six months, you haven't found a home? Yeah. I go, I am your agent. I will find you a home this week or next. Guaranteed, you will have the home of your dreams in the next one or two times out. I do it all the time. She would, her expectation, she believed it. Yeah. She was gonna sell him a home the first or second time out. Mm -hmm. And she sold 59 homes her first year. And she would do that at the open house when she yeah. first met them. She's like, no, 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 you're working them. with all this. Something is desperately wrong. Right. She calls spade a spade. I mean, it, it could be with the buyer, right? <laughs> but, uh, but something's desperately wrong here. Let me take you out tomorrow, and we will find you a home tomorrow. Because I'm very good at what I do. If not tomorrow, next week. Are you ready to buy a house? Come on, you're with me. You're mine. Come on. And she'd smile at them, and they'd be laying and fall like a lamb on the shoulder. And, and, and she would, did she not sell homes? Like, boom, boom, everything. You remember, Lisa? You were there. Yeah. She also never, ever, ever let the sun go down without calling every single person she met that day. Well, let me correct that. Let me correct that. That's very close. Um, she would do her open house, and she would go home. And well, you know, you're tired. You've been doing an open house yeah. all day. And she would take. She might meet 17 people or 12. She would call the top two or three. Is what she would do. I've talked to her in detail. She'd not call 17. Top two or three that were just hot. You ever really kind of yes. an individual or a couple at open house? Mm -hmm. And she would say, Oh my gosh, Alicia, I just found the home. I could I fell in love with you when I met you. You were so amazing. And I couldn't help but look. You know, you said you wanted Briggs Ranch or or the promontory. I found one in Briggs Ranch that went on the market two hours ago. And then I called my friend in the promontory and they have a pocket listing that goes in this Friday, but they said I can show it to you tomorrow. Mm. And then they're like, oh my gosh, she would just like this, and she would jump on it. Time decay, right? Yeah. When it's hot, it's hot. Don't let time cool, people cool off. She would jump on her best ones. She sold 59 homes her first year. Now the other thing is, um, so that's managing uh, a client expectations. Now the other thing is, people, everybody has champagne taste on a yeah. budget. So everybody wants a pretty amazing home for 250. <laughs> the people spending eight, they want a home for 1.2 million. Yes, right. the people spending 1.5 million want a two million dollar yeah. house. Yep. it's the same for everybody. So, man, how do you manage the client's expectation when showing property? Uh, most of you know this. Some of you don't. You show the worst homes first. You actually go, oh, that's hideous. It's you go to horrible and you don't show it. I show that. It's my first house. I want to show a hideous 1.4 million dollar home. I want a big old water tank right next to it. <laughs> I, I want I want low income housing across the street. I want I, I want I want it to smell like K 
cats and dogs. You know, like, well, yeah, they're relocating. They were big pet lovers. You know, they had a few dogs and cats. So rather than replace the carpet and the pad, we want you to pick your colors. And so this is a bring your tool belt fixer upper at 1.1 million or 500,000. Translate that for you. It smells terrible. There's so much ammonia in that house, your eyes water, right? <laughs> and then my clients come in, they're like, oh my God. <laughs> and I go, no, 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 no. They, they vacuum, they think we got it at least do a first back run through. And I travel the whole house. They're like, oh my God, you know? <laughs> I'm like, here you go, Phoenix, Phoenix. I'm like, oh my God. And, and, and I make them, I make them go through the house. You just pull away. Oh make my God, look at it. It's like uh, the Adams family lives here, a Halloween house. I go, I go, hey, they get so mad. They worked, they vacuumed, they ran around, they did the dishes. I would catch so we just just one minute, just a quick and boom. And then we go in the house and they're like, oh, they want I remember this one woman draped in diamonds. She was so statusy and just it was Granite Bay. And she was like, oh my god, don't touch anything. And she was like, they want 900 for this. And she had been a really difficult client to I'm showing her beautiful. I'm just like, this is horrible. And oh my God, who would live here? I'm like, I'd give my right arm to live here. This is a beautiful house. You want to go to my house? You would not be looking at a property with me if you saw how I live. Like there's a smudge on the stainless steel whoop appliance or whatever. And so I actually did that to her. And then I showed an okay one. It's like, oh, this is way better. And then it was, and then I showed, and then, and then I saved two of the best ones. She bought a home that day. But I managed the expectations. I brought her from, you know, 900 and 1.4 to, Bam. And then when I showed her okay stuff, she's like, wow, this is way better. Because she had something to compare it to. She couldn't yeah. appreciate it. When you show five to seven amazing homes, you ever done this? You show property, you had done, and you go, what do you think? Like, God, we're just confused. Yeah. <laughs> they were all yeah. pretty awesome. I can't even, what was that first one? And you want to take notes. You want to do all that stuff. Are you with me? Yeah. That's managing the client expect experience. Mm -hmm. The other way you do that is do the home inspection. When you do get an escrow, if you're very new, I was going to get there. <laughs> I tell him, I go, look, Barry, the home inspector, do you want one to praise the house or one to find every cracked towel, every leaky faucet, every electrical issue, every window that maybe has a bad seal, the roof, the insulation, you know, to really check out the water heater and the appliances, the oven, the dishwasher, no, it's all running right. What do you want? You want someone just to kind of the back and say, nice purchase? You want them to go through and tear this house apart. Which one do you want? Oh, I go, that's the one I'm giving you. And, and, um, Lester Home Inspections or North American Home Services, you know, and, and so they are good. And let me tell you right now, Barry, they're going to any home we bring them, they're going to tear it to shreds. Could be a brand new home. They will give you photographs and pictures of, of a cracko a stuck in the cracko, a window, whatever. <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> 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 They're gonna, they're gonna go through and they will scare the heck out of you on any home we bring them. They're that good, okay? Oh geez, now watch this, watch it. Very important, you get what I just did. And I go, they're gonna give you pages and pages and pages of stuff. Now it's all usually a bunch of minor handyman stuff. What we're really looking for is, is the foundation secure? Are the windows good, all 40 of them? Is the roof good? It's the important components. You know, uh, 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 you're going to find out if the sprinkler's pointing towards the fence and going to cause dry rot or hitting the house and going to cause an issue collapse. You're going to find out about drainage and we can deal with these things. Most of it's handy, but I need to prepare you. It's going to be freak you out. It'll all be photographed. It's going to be bad. Okay, no, Barry, I just want you to know. And then I prepare them, and guess what? I go to my home inspections, so I don't go, I ever go to them, by the way. Mm. But um, you can go to yours. I, I quit doing that 15 years ago. And, and I go, this is your time to be alone with your home inspector. I know you guys had a big discussion on this, how I feel about it. I go, because I don't want to do it. I, I would rather go bowling. I'd rather, you know, I'd rather scrub the toilets at my house and hours and hours of home inspection. <laughs> anyway, so, right? And, and the, the, listen, you better be there. I go, I can't. You're welcome to go. <laughs> They're like, you can't do that. I go, watch me. You know, I can't, I can't be there. I'm booked. You know, you want to give us a week extension? I could be there next week. I'm, I'm mean to them. I'm like, whatever. You know, it ain't going to happen. Your seller can be there. You know, my home is starting out forever. North Americans, they're great. And so I could let them in. That's all I could do. Then our inspector's going to lock up. You know, if it's vacant, you're home free. You do have to play politics a little bit with the occupied home. But uh, I said, this is your time. If I'm standing there with you and your home inspector's here, he's going to uh, 
um, couch his words to you? Do you want him to kind of put a happy face on it because they're going to feel pressure to me because all home inspectors are worried that the agent thinks they're going to blow the deal. I don't want to be there so he can talk candidly with you and tell you the truth. You're paying him four, five, six hundred bucks. Right. This is your his time to be candid with you and speak the truth. You want him to polish his words, couch his words. You want him to tell you the honest truth about that. What do you want? Because your client will say, I want you there. I go, I'll come. It's the worst thing for you. He's going to he is just gonna, he's gonna ease it. And you're not gonna realize what's happening. It happens every time. So really, the worst thing for you is to have me there. They're like, yeah, don't come. I'm good. <laughs> really wish I could have been there, you know? And, and I, I don't wanna be there. And you know what? I truly believe that. I believe if I'm not there, they'll speak more candidly than client. I actually believe it, and it gets me into something I don't wanna do is sit around for four or five hours and waste my time. I could be so property, put another home in escrow, yes. Hey, also, just to piggyback on kind of what you're saying from from our side of the fence, like what do you think that what do you think in about our reports? Side? Like, look, like we get threats of lawsuit as well, just like everybody else. Oh, you missed this! Like that's that's the the, the, the buyer's favorite response, right? But uh, what I <laughs> what I always recommend is much like Brent said, like not when people just rely on the report, especially if they're very literal. Those reports are the scariest thing you've ever read in your life. Yeah. So when they're when they're there, we always encourage the buyer mm -hmm. to be there for the last 30 minutes, do the walkthrough, because then you get the body language, the tone, the facial expression. You actually get to feel the home inspector's feeling of that property. Then they glance through the report, uh -huh. whereas if they're not there, they read word for word. Right. Like, oh, yeah. <gasps> so it is vital yeah. your client be yes. there. Yeah, Vital, vital, vital. I like you have to be there. We'll postpone it. You cannot not be there. Mm -hmm. Now, if they're out of the country, they're out of the country. If their job is then, then some of those you know, interest. Thank you. That is a great point. I did not make. I got to move on. Anything else? Okay. So last part. Uh, so we have managing the agent's expectations. The other agent, whether it's the buyer's agent or the listing agent, we have managing the client's expectations. Then we have this one. Managing yours. Mm -hmm. Some of you don't expect to sell a house this week. And I'm here to tell you, you're not going to. Some of you don't expect to sell a house today. It's not even on your radar. You're not even thinking about it. You have no expectations. You got all day today. Go find some show house right off or put it after tonight. You don't really expect it. Listen, listen to me. You get what you expect. The house you live in. The car you drive, or the motorcycle, because you can't afford a car. <laughs> Hop on the back, let's look at property. The, the, the public schools your kids are in, maybe you'd rather have them in private. The trips you take, the vacations you take, the quality of vacations, the quality of those things, they all line up perfectly to the penny what that you expect out of your life. I'll tell you right now. And when you start expecting different things to happen, you demand more out of yourself. And you're more focused and you have a game plan and you go after it like a barracuda. Things start to shift. They start to release in your life. And so I really wanna challenge you, don't be a thermometer. This is a real stage that goes up and down. My client's excited, they're depressed. My client loves me, they hate me. I'm in escrow, I close all my escrows. I have nothing in escrow. I got one in escrow, I got five in escrow, it's a mountain top, I got nine in escrow. I close them all. What, what, what's next? I haven't even paid off all our credit cards. What do you got? I got nothing in escrow. And then the panic hits you, right? It's this, right? You don't wanna be a thermostat. A thermostat does what? It goes up and down with its environment. It rides the waves in the ocean, right? It's okay, sometimes that ocean's smooth, but sometimes it's got 30 foot swells. And I, you all know, and, and I'll never forget the night that um, this one here called me and said at three o'clock in the morning, she could not sleep. She was on a 30 foot swell, remember that? She was calling me the next morning and, and I gave you some advice on how to handle it. I don't remember what it was, but it was good at the time, right? It was, it was <laughs> <laughs> there, um, I go, it's a crappy, there's nothing she could do about the situation. Now I remember, there's nothing she could do about it. She had done nothing wrong. There's nothing she could do about it. And I go, but here's your, you're thinking about it and thinking about it. It's just like, it's like that scary movie of Sinbad and the ships get sucked into a whirlpool, right? Like, ah, swim away, swim away from that. And, and you get sucked up. So I said, you have to stop and think about how 
Um, what's good in your life? Maybe you're going to Apple Hill this weekend. Maybe you just went to Bishop's Pumpkin Patch and it was a really special time with your family. And you took your phone and, and, you, and you left it in the glove box. You left it in the glove box. It's okay for you to take two hours. It's okay if nobody can reach you for two hours. You went to dinner with your spouse. You had the most amazing dinner because your phone was in the glove box. Leave the phone alone. Get away from the phone. Be completely present with your kids, your husband, your wife, all that sort of stuff. Are my notes on there? No, my notes are here. Um, <laughs> those sort of things. Now, um, find your phone. So thermostat, expectations. What are your expectations? Manage your expectations and goals and plans. You cannot hit a goal you don't have. If you're not completely focused to know exactly where you're going and how you're going to get there. Like, how are you gonna sell 10 buyers homes this year? How are you gonna go get, well, I, I wanna do 66% uh, listings and 33% buyers. I'm tired of being a 100% buyers agent. Okay, how are you gonna do that? I don't know. Well, sit down with somebody else. I've hired Drew. He is my marketing director. He makes 100,000 a year, full benefits. And can we tell him what happened to your daughter Monday? Oh yeah, she fell off a three foot toddler ladder, broke her arm in two places, and, uh, and may need surgery. And we just gave a full medical benefits. Woohoo! We're yeah. So uh, we go better prices eat. So it's good. It's good insurance. We're good. So we're happy about the two broken bones. Kidding. But we're happy that your money's that little sweet little toddler's covered. So uh, what's her name? It's Emma. Lord, we just pray for Emma right now that you help Emma's arm and just heal her little body and give the doctors wisdom and the surgery. We just thank you in your son's name. Amen. A little short prayer for Emma. I hope that didn't weird anybody out, but that's, uh, that lines up with me. Now, um, but here's the deal. Drew is our marketing go-to guy. He understands KB Core at a hard, high level. Any of you can make an appointment with Drew. He'll, he'll help set up your website. He'll help get it going where you get leads. Sound good, everybody? So Drew does that for me now, and he's doing a great job. And he's there to help you with the business plan. He's there to encourage you. He's here Monday through Friday. He's around. I'm gone a bit more than I used to be gone. I am available to any of you on text. Don't you dare say Brent's too busy to help me. Really? Because I help people that aren't even in my business and spend 10, 20 minutes with them. And just a guy in Montana, I don't even know who he is, don't even care. I'm going to help him. I'll help you. So shoot me a text. I'll help you. Right? Cindy, do you text me when you go to jam? Yeah. Darcy? Yeah. What? Text me. Oh, I don't want to bother him. Stop it. Again, you, you, that's wacko. That's not, that's not a healthy thing in you. We want to help you. Okay? They'll help you, right? Yeah, if exactly. we're busy, we'll tell you. Hey, I'm busy. I can't right now, but I can. Okay, so goals and plans. Well thought out and written. Well thought out and written. So what does that have to lead into this? I'm spending thousands of dollars to fly Sean Kokoska in on, a, on a November 7th. I'm taking the Napa, he and his wife. Put them up in a beautiful thing. I had to bribe him with Napa cuisine and good wine and all that. So they're flying in from Dallas. I'm paying for their airfare, paying for Napa, paying for very expensive event. And this is a chance for you to. He, he's coached uh, already Goodyear, uh, Fidelity, uh, GMC, FedEx, Fidelity, GenTech, Panasonic, T-Mobile. He he's a, he's a like a coach to Fortune 500 companies. But his real start was real estate. He was the president of Maps Coaching. Keller Williams, he saw the ESP revenue sharing, stock bearing model, and he's like, and he left Keller Williams, he's now an EXP agent. So he'll be here on November 7th at Placer County Board of Realtors from 10 to 2, it's 25 bucks, and you'll all get lunch, and you'll get a workbook, a business planning workbook. A lot of value here for 25 bucks. Um, bring two or three guests. I'll say this, uh, 2009, all the team leaders in Sacramento bought three, four, five, <laughs> seven guests. I brought 33. I outworked them. I got on the phone, said, you got to come, I'll scholarship you. you got to come, I'll scholarship you. If you had four guests come from other companies and you spent 100 bucks, it's 25 each scholarshiping them, and you registered for them, let them know, you have to come. Your lunch will, they're making lunch for you. It'll sit empty at your desk. I'm paying for it. So if you commit, be there. Get really nail them down. Because agents are like slippery fish. <laughs> so go, but this is your plan. Do you have a business plan for 2020? Listen to me. If you don't have a plan, nothing's going to change. If you're really happy with 2019, and some of you are great, you'll probably repeat that 2020. Most agents, I'm talking to 80% of them, would like things to be different 2020. If you don't have a well thought out, written, crafted business plan, nothing's going to change. So for 25 bucks, November 7th, you can have this. 
Who's, who's going to go to that? Raise your hand high. I mean, hopefully the whole room. Hopefully there's not a reason won't be there. Also, um, on the home stretch here, um, I want to let you know, next Wednesday, there's an event in the Bay Area in San Carlos with Rick Chiha, myself, and Sean Work. It's three hours if you have an agent in San Carlos, which is by Burlingame, Daily City, South San Francisco. Uh, I don't think we have that here, do we? Um, no, it's I, I, all on BrentGoResources.com. So if you go to BrentGoResources.com, you can hear all about it. It is 20 per person. Guests are free on that one. You can bring 10 guests for free. But if you have any agents, there's no charge for them to come. Lunch is provided, beverages. It's it's going to be a really high end. It's not, not about EXP. We're going to go add value and then make them go, wow, and those guys are all with EXP? Yeah. And then it'll go, you know what? Tell me more about this EXP. So it's more of just coming from value. Sound good? Yeah. And then... Um, we're doing a night in Napa. Now in order to go, because it's very expensive, I could not open this up to everyone in Northern California. Should I do a sponsored 15? So if you've sponsored 15, we're doing a night in Napa. It's on me at the Archer on top of the hotel. There's, uh, it's amazing. All of downtown Napa, it's the highest building in Napa. Stunning, my treat, the whole thing. Uh, 50, if you sponsored 15 in our, that's November 3rd from seven to nine, come in early, have dinner, whatever. Uh, business plan to cover that. Okay, two things, December 14th is EXP's Northern California annual Christmas party. It'll be at the Powerhouse Inn in Folsom. I've hired the Spasmatics, my favorite rock band of all time. They're an 80s tribute band and they are not good. They are exceptional, they are phenomenal. It's the most fun I've ever had in my life was at a Spasmatics concert in Austin. They are, they're a franchise, they operate out of Nashville, Austin, and believe it or not, third franchise is Folsom, California. Oh my word. And so it's 12,000 bucks to get them to play for three hours. Oh. We are charging uh, 20. 20 bucks per person. Oh. Food and beverage will be there. And it's the <coughs> annual Christmas party. It's gonna be, and that holds up to a thousand people, the venue. Bring family, bring okay. friends. You can't bring kids because it's gotta be 21 and older. It is the powerhouse pub. Okay. And there'll be open bars. Again, this isn't a big wild crazy drinking thing. This is more, you can have a few adult beverages, one or two, or whatever your deal is, and sodas, hot chocolate, and coffee, it's like that. But it's gonna be, I'm telling you, just trust me, you will go, that was a blast. So there's that. Um, and then finally, uh, um, for the Brent Cove team, people that I actually get a percentage of at home when you sell a home, you're on my, because we have guests here who are just gonna be a part of it, brokers. And, and, and so for my personal team where, you know, we have a deal, right? You're new, maybe I get 50% or 40 or 30 or 20, whatever the deal is, the years you've been with me. Um, that's my personal team where I'm actually getting a, a cut of, of stuff. Um, we're having a personal Brent Cove team party that's December 20th at CNS one to four. Everybody has to bail out early sometimes. Please schedule one to four. We're gonna make this year extra special. I won't tell you what's gonna happen, but it's gonna freak you out. One to four at CNS, the, the Brent Cove personal team, which is different from EXP where we'll I have 500 to 1,000 people are, it's gonna be amazing. Final questions, and we are about two minutes over. Final questions, anybody have? Don't forget, if you qualify for this year's uh, Caribbean trip, get your passports ready, and we're leaving. We have 23 cabins this year on the Allure, largest cruise ship in the world. It's gonna be a blast, November 9th to the 17th. We'll be gone for eight or nine days, and it's gonna be deep Caribbean cruise. And next year, we are going to Maui, and because of this woman who's raising her hand, we're gonna to go to Kauai. Yay! We're gonna do, so that, we're gonna do a, um, the flight is like a, uh, how long, 30 minute flight? 20 minute flight, you leave, you go up, and you go down. Yeah. And you just go boom, boom, you're in Kauai. 20 minute flight, it's 75 bucks a person for the inner island, I'll treat, I treat. And we're gonna do like five days in Maui, and maybe four days in Kauai. So we get actually there longer for nine days. And it was city said they had so much fun, and it's it's called the Garden Island. It's what you really think Hawaii's gonna be because it's totally tropical, mm -hmm. waterfalls and trails. Yeah. You get to Maui, you end in a pineapple with sugarcane fields, and it looks like Sacramento. You're like, <laughs> what the heck? I mean, it looks like Sacramento. You're in Maui, but then you leave the pineapple tree to the coast, and then Maui turns beautiful. It's, it's my favorite place in the world. That's why I've been like. 20 times mm -hmm. so but we're gonna we're gonna break it up sound good this year yes you had a question you were raising your hand um, what, what uh, my question was oh one if people have other passports because i just waited you only have two more days or you're not going on the cruise ship so if any of you haven't gone well, let's put that out 
You got two more days or you're not making it. And I put a post on the Roseville place. Yes, and it's awesome. the new place. So yeah, don't go no where lines. it says online. There's no lines. They, we went they, to Citrus Heights and the line was out into the parking yeah. lot. They said it, come back. It's because it just opened this week, which I didn't know. So, so Roseville, where? Right downtown Roseville. Is right across, across on Vernon Street. A passport Street. office Six on Vernon Street. Six people standing there with nothing. If so, can get one. Like, well, I'm not going on your cruise. Get one. It's You'll go to Mexico and maybe in February and or somewhere you need your, a passport. Your new California ID is there without going to the DMV, so really? I did that while I was there too. Yeah, you can do it all right there. Um, and then my other question is, yes. when, when do we find out our awards from the XMV on the team? Uh, Rob, can you check into that? What is it? Oh, find out about awards. awards. She won awards, and when does she find out when they get so plaques and awards? Con, so we don't know. I think you have to request them to be sent in the mail. I can probably text Dave and ask him. So they have to send us earlier. even what stats of our award we got. That's out. You just have to look at the production numbers on there. But maybe. No, Let's, maybe we'll, we'll do it for you. We'll check okay. it. Okay. Okay. Next thing. Okay. Next thing. Next thing. Barry, you want to say something real quick, and I gotta wrap it up. Yeah, just uh, 201 Park. Uh, everybody familiar with Royer Park? Yes. Well, there's that street right there has about 17 homes on it. Yeah. My flip that's on that house, we took a 700 square foot house, added 1,100 square Whoa. feet to it. So it's basically new construction, and it's going to go live next week. Um, if you guys want to get in there, I've got yes. it staged right now, but the landscaping's not finished. There's a lockbox there. The code is F-U-N. <laughs> How fun. That's yeah. awesome. So the code is fun. The price is going to be $589. And it's and, 1,800 square feet. Um, yeah, right. We're a little bit bigger than that, I think. Not much, but a little bit bigger. Really? And uh, brand, brand new construction. Way bigger. Brand new construction. And so, if you guys want to take a client by to look at it, it's What's a great the, thing to do. Uh, which house number again? 201 Park. Out in front of it. You can't yeah, it does have my coming soon sign on it. So I'll give you a chance to get in You'll there before see anybody else. In that, and I love this when you guys share stuff like that at this mm -hmm. table. So make sure next Thursday when you come. Come prepared to share. If you cap, tell us you cap. We'll celebrate you at 100% with EXP, all that sort of thing. Um, if you're a guest here today, Rob, do we, I, I don't see where the books are. There was a whole I bunch. Have, I have boxes. You've got them stashed. Yep. Okay, so if you're a guest here today, all the people I introduced, I'm going to give you a copy of my book, Momentum. Cool. So get it. It's the best I have about how I sold my 4,000 homes, chapters on buyers, sellers, marketing, all that. Uh, see Rob, he'll give you a copy. Frank? Um, really quick. This is my awesome wife, Mary. You know, Mary. Hey, Mary. Hey, Mary. Hi. She, also has a, she also has a great staging business. And for those of you who are interested in that, she brought her cards. and uh, She just she staged a condo for me. It came out great. We got more than full price offer. She staged awesome. the condo for Frank and I that we did together last year. We got over full price. Yay. So Mary is amazing. And then we have Dan in the back, North American Termite. They do roof, they do home inspections, and they do termite inspections, which is really wood destroying pest organisms, all that sort of thing. So see Dan, he is our guy. And then the amazing Alicia Blackwood, who is like probably, um, probably the best lender in Sacramento, in all honesty, you know. Um, probably, we'll see. But ah, yes. uh, she is amazing. People love her, and I'm telling you, she does 10 times more than the average lender in Sacramento, and she is a rock star. I mean, you're, it's like 10th degree black belt. So if you're not working with a lender that rocks your socks, you need to go to coffee with her, meet her. She's the best of the best. There's only one lender sitting in this room, and it's her. And we do still work with Jeff Compton. We love Jeff Compton, and he is amazing, and that's why I said probably one of the best. <laughs> so there's Jeff and, and Alicia right there, and I adore Jeff, and he's phenomenal that in there. I think I got our vendors hit on. And then Debbie, you do escrow management on homes. So if you want someone just to put it in escrow and to walk away and she takes it to close, that's what she did for me for many, many, many years. If she could put up with me, she could put up with you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> unless you're married. <laughs> Ask already and done. Uh, that was the answer. <laughs> I couldn't resist. <laughs> but anyway, so I love Barry. He's my workout buddy. We work out every day. You can tell, right? <laughs> this morning we got there, sat down and talked for 30 minutes. It was hilarious. I'm like, man, we only got 20 left. Five. Uh, it, it was a light workout today. So awesome, day, everyone. We'll see you next. Thursday right here, 10 to 11, and we'll see you tonight.